How I passed the CCMP Encore in five steps. So no cap, this is a video I'm not gonna edit too much. I'm just gonna be spitting from the dome, telling you guys how this test really was. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is this test is hard as I don't know what. This is probably the hardest certification I've ever studied for, done, taken. Uh, right off the bat, I failed this test. The first three times I took it, I'm a fourth attempt, I passed it. Um, I was on a lot of reddits and a lot of reddits people were having the same issues uh, My biggest complaint about the test is that let's say like for example, I started studying in October 2024 and I passed it March 2025 now some people say you should take like a year to study or whatever uh, but I already had networking knowledge from my day-to-day -day job and from the CCNA and whatever. So I felt like my time frame was good. My first attempt was like December 20 something. Uh, that time I could really see taking the test that I was missing some gaps in my knowledge. Uh, but the second and third time I really felt like I knew what I was doing. But at the end of the day, um, the little trivia questions as I like to call it is what ends up getting you. The labs are straight, they test you on the knowledge of everything you study for, everything you've labbed on. So those traits, I don't have no complaints on the labs. But some of the multiple choice questions, uh, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, are really just like trivia questions. Like I literally read through the whole book and some of the questions they asked, you wouldn't know unless you went outside of the Cisco press book, did more studying by yourself, went deeper into the topic to know about it. So that's what I mean by a trivia question. Like you gotta do like, you basically got to know the whole thing in and out, which, again, isn't bad because the CCMP is such a high level, but I wish I would have known that. It was like at the third attempt that I realized, okay, I need to really lock in into, first of all, SD WAN, SD access, anything SD, anything. That was where most of those trivia questions were coming from. Uh, automation, dude, 15% of tests felt more like 30%. I'm not going to lie. Uh, automation was pretty straight. I think I got like 80, 90% every attempt after my first, so that was pretty easy to lock in. Uh, infrastructure, basically routing and switching, that was another easy part. I felt like the hardest parts, for me at least, were the SD stuff, because um, there's so many things you gotta know, like the control plane, management plane, orchestration plane, and everything that incorporates with those different planes, uh, and it can ask you, dude, I don't know, it's been like a month since I took the test, but, crazy you gotta you gotta know what you're doing you gotta know what you're studying um and i even had like a spreadsheet of everything i was doing i think i was studying either two three hours a day every day uh i think a, the total amount of time that i summed up studying for this test since october was probably over either between 250 and 350 hours total of studying uh, only reason I started tracking my studying is because I had watched Kevin Wallace like Udemy video and at the end it was like, you should track it. So I started tracking to really see where I needed to focus on. And really the shift from me failing the test and passing was when I stopped doing like practice tests and just put all my time on weak points, which kind of sounds pretty obvious if you want to focus on your weak points. But on my fourth attempt, you can see like the column I had for weak points was just full of hours and hours and hours. I would still lab the things out. I even started like handwriting out my lab commands uh, to memorize them even more. So I would obviously be labbing it, but then I would also be handwriting it so I could get no contextual help at all. And I felt like that actually helped me. And, and another thing, this is an expensive cert, dude. I think out of all my failed attempts and the passing and the study guys, I think I spent over $1,800. And that's just on Encore. I haven't even done the NRC yet. I'm studying for the NRC right now, the routing and switching. So just for Encore, I spent about $1,800. A lot of you are probably like, bro, what the heck? Is it even worth it? I would say the CCMP is, it is worth it because you're learning a lot. Nobody can take that away from you. So I would say get it because you're learning a lot and you're going to be way above somebody that has CCNA knowledge. The CCMP, I felt like, has taken my troubleshooting knowledge and level to a to another level, basically. Um, so I would definitely say get the CCMP Encore. If you're deep into networking, that's your day-to-day, -day, that's what you want to pursue. 
or even if you're doing cybersecurity. If you're doing, if your main thing is cybersecurity, I probably wouldn't go for the CCMP. I would probably like study it, but I wouldn't go for the cert. Uh, CCMP security is more like what you would want, but CCMP Encore, I wouldn't waste my time if I was just doing cybersecurity. But if you're heavy into networking, yes. So I told you guys about the five steps, so let's go ahead and get right into it. The first step is gonna be printing out the whole study guide, the whole sheet, whatever you call it, the rubric. Uh, when you print out this sheet, it becomes a game changer. I don't know if it's because I'm not even like an old head, but I feel like an old head. I needed to print out the sheet. I needed to look at every single line that they had for the guide. And whatever weak points I had, I would highlight that, all right? Every day I came in to work or at my house, if I had free time at work, I would go into those topics and either uh, read up on them, lab them out, whatever it may be. If I'm at home, I'm doing practice tests on that specific topic, labbing it out. So, again, when you go focus on your weak points, that, that little printout guide is going to help you. Print it out, write some notes on it, what you need to focus on, highlight, whatever you need to do. I feel like the PDF, if, if you can do it on a PDF, congrats. But I feel like when you print it out, you can actually connect with the piece of paper on what you need to focus on. All right, so the second step after printing out that rubric uh, is going to be purchasing your study material. You're not going to pass this test just getting the Cisco Press Book. If you do, you are smart as I don't know what. Uh, so let's go over everything that I purchased and what I recommend purchasing. So the first thing I have purchased was the CBT Nuggets course. I'm not going to lie, that course, it showed me a pretty foundational knowledge of what you needed to know for the CCMP, but some of those people I just can't stand talk. That's just me. Uh, the Boson Practice Exams, boson is amazing uh not only when you get the practice exam do they give you the practice questions and the reasons why you got it wrong or right which is super beneficial because it, i feel like it adds on to what you read in the press book so if i didn't mention it yes you still need to buy the press book even if that's not going to be the only thing to help you pass so press book uh, cbt nuggets boson boson highly recommend press book recommend because you need to read it through because, again, those trivia questions, something might relate back to what you read on it. So you need to read the whole thing. Don't just use it as a reference. Read the whole press book. CBT Nuggets, you could probably skip out, skip out on. Boson is an amazing resource. I would definitely get that. I even got the Boson Simulator. Uh, but I probably wouldn't do that. I actually use Modern Labs for my labs. I just got the Boson Simulator to see if it would help me. That was kind of a waste of money. I think the best bang for your buck. Boson wise is getting those practice exams. And then uh, I obviously use Kevin Wallace Udemy. I feel like the Kevin Wallace Udemy course, I don't know, that dude when he talks, I just understand what he's talking about. That was way cheaper than the CB10 Nuggets. It was like 15 bucks on Udemy. And that 15 buck course, I felt like I was able to retain more knowledge than that CBT Nuggets course, which was like 60 bucks a month, which isn't really bad, but I don't know. I, I wasn't grasping with them. Uh, so if you're going to buy anything, invest into modding labs because you need to lab out this stuff. If you don't pass the labs that you get on the test, you're going to fail. So I would definitely lab, lab, lab. Um, the Boson Practice Exams is a must. The Press Book and Kevin Wallace Udemy, those resources is really going to help you out. And even if uh, when you get the questions wrong on like Boson, for example, or you keep or you keep getting stuck on a topic, when it gives you the explanation, they give you links to things you can click on. So I would click on those and grab them as references to add to your studies. All right, so the third step is read the full book. This is this is the way to use the study material. So read the full book, do a lot of practice tests, a lot of practice questions, and lab everything out, all right? So when you read the full book, you already got the foundational knowledge of what you need to know. And then the practice questions is going to reinforce that knowledge. Uh, what I would do is I did the practice questions however many times uh, in the Cisco Pearson. It gives you practice questions and Boson, it gives you practice questions. So anyways, you want to do all those practice tests and get your weak points. Whatever your weak points are in the practice test, it'll let you know. It'll break it up into categories between either Boson or the Pearson Test Center uh, practice questions that you get when you buy the Cisco book. 
So I will write those weak points down and then I will go back in, take another practice test, but just with those weak points. So if you keep doing that, your weak points are not going to become your weak points anymore. They're going to level out with everything you know. Uh, not only do you want to do that, when you look at the little sheet you printed out in the first step, anything that says configure, you're going to want to go into Cisco Modern Labs, look up some YouTube videos, or even you could chat GBT like, hey, make a lab with this. Um, so wh whatever says configure, you need to lab that out. Like, no cap, if it says configure, you're going to see it on the test. Trust me, I looked at the test three, four times out of all the times I took it, and everything that said configure, you're going to get tested on. So make sure not to skip out on those because those are valuable points that you need when you take this test. So the fourth step you're going to want to make sure you do is create a study tracker of the time. I mentioned it early on in the video, but this is really going to help you because when you keep track of everything listed with time, you can really see what you put your effort on. Because, yeah, you could say, yeah, I think I did study up on my weak points. But if you go back to the study tracker, you're going to see, oh, I only did five hours of weak points, but I did like 15 hours of labs. All right, 15 hours of labs is great. But you're going to want your weak points to, boom, be the main column. Because, again, if your weak points you didn't practice on, that is a dead giveaway in the time tracker that you got that you need to focus back up on. All right. So let's say you use the time tracker efficiently. You will see you put a lot of time into labs. You put a lot of time into weak points, into reading the material, into practice tests. OK, so once you see all those are evened out, ideally more time on weak points at the end of it then I would say you're about ready to take the test. Make sure that, again, for example, me, I did 250, 350 hours. Somebody might be able to do it less. Somebody might need to do it in more. From the Reddit I've done, I think the sweet spot to finally pay the 400 bucks to take the test is going to be at least over 250 hours. 300, probably ideal. So fifth step, basically just to reevaluate everything and recap, uh, once you looked at everything, your study tracker, you got all the study material purchase, you did it all, you studied it all, uh, just go ahead and take the test, man. Good luck. And hopefully if you pass, if you don't pass, whatever, it's a hard test. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't get upset. Um, pay the 400 bucks to do it again. Dude, trust me, I went through it. All right. I kept paying the, the money and finally was able to pass it. So... Yeah, it's a little bit discouraging because you got to pay that 400 bucks every time. 400 bucks might be a, a little bit for somebody, but 400 bucks from where I'm from, that's nothing to just be throwing away. All right. But I made the investment because this is something like you got CCMP on your resume or somebody knows you're CCMP. They know you on another level all right? when it comes to troubleshooting and networking. So, again, I definitely would say it's worth it. And my key takeaways, just to end the video, is definitely, again, going back at the beginning, make sure you know all your SD-related topics, all right? SD-WAN, SD-Access, anything related to the different planes they talk about, orchestration management, whatever. Make sure you know it. Make sure you know the equipment that comes with it. Make sure you know all the different security offerings that Cisco provides that they mentioned in the book. Make sure you know that in depth. Um, I feel like those were the things that killed me when I first failed the test. And when I restudied on them, that's what helped me pass. And automation, if you don't know what you're doing in automation, you're going to fail this test. Because trust me, you get a lot of automation questions. So even though it's not really routing and switching like you did on the CCNA or just networking in general, that's kind of where networking is moving to, to automating. So you want to make sure you automate. I already got some Python programming language in my head from back in school and uh, a lot of different labs I used to do back in the day. So it was kind of easy for me to restudy up on it and retain it again. But somebody that's completely new to programming, I would probably do some Python scripts, uh, lab out some Python, do some, watch some Python videos and literally just lab it out. Labbing is probably the best thing you could do. But yeah, trust me, if you don't know, uh, automation or, and don't focus on those SD topics, you're going to fail this exam. So I would definitely recommend to look into that for real. Uh, as far as questions on the test, mine was around like 60. I think like lab questions, I probably got like five or six if I can remember. Uh, so just make sure you, you prepare. Uh, and again, don't dis don't get discouraged if you fail. Just take it again. Everything about life is failing. If you don't fail, what are you really learning? So leave me a comment down below. Uh, the best tip you got from this video, let me know if you've already taken the test. 
uh, and let me know your thoughts on the test. I think the test is worth it. It teaches you a lot. Uh, hopefully, I can pass my NRC soon. CCIE, I do not think I would do a CCIE. My job would have to pay me to do a CCIE because it's just so expensive. And you basically be overqualifying yourself unless you are doing those CCIE level tasks. But yeah, man, make sure you leave me a comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And hopefully you subscribed if you enjoyed. Catch you guys on the next one.